Is there more to midlife than just getting through it? Absolutely. Welcome. I'm your host, Debbie Cunningham, jazz artist turned midlife mentor. And I'm here to say to you loud and clear, it's time for your midlife crescendo. Happy April, friends. Or if you're listening to this on the day it drops into your podcast app, it is happy April Fool's Day. So beware out there. When my kids are little, my son used to find ways to get me on April Fool's Day, and I indeed fell prey to many of his pranks over the years. His favorite was tying a rubber band around the spray hose at the kitchen sink. He would do it after I went to bed the night before, and since I was the first person down in the kitchen every single day. Guess who got soaked? (laughs) He's 25 and I'm still trying to find the perfect joke to repay him. So if you have ideas, definitely send them my way. Oh, can you believe we just finished the first quarter of 2024? When you think about the year in quarters, it goes super fast. Today on the podcast, we are talking about starting new things in midlife with the co-hosts of Hot Flashes and Cool Topics. I met Colleen and Bridget at their Conversations with Prime Women event held in Nashville, Tennessee last fall. We had a wonderful conversation today about their friendship and how they started their podcast midlife and what has transpired in their life since then. Before we dive into the interview, I just want to tell you some news. Midlife Crescendo has a brand new newsletter. As we progress through 2024, it'll keep you posted on upcoming topics, special guests, as well as upcoming events on the horizon. I'm excited for what the future has in store. So go to debbiecunningham.net forward slash podcast to sign up. Okay, now on with the show. Today on Midlife Crescendo, I have with me some very special guests, Colleen Rosenblum and Bridget Garrett. They are the co-hosts of Hot Flashes and Cool Topics podcast, and they are known as the voice for women in midlife and beyond. The podcast is in the top one and a half percent of global podcasts. Colleen is a former attorney, Pilates instructor, and now podcaster. She married her high school sweetheart, and they have two incredible daughters. Colleen loves spreading the word on women's health and the best kept secrets of midlife and beyond. Bridget is a former elementary school teacher, actress, and now podcaster. She raised a son and a daughter, married her college sweetheart, and she has a passion for women's health issues. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Well, I am delighted to have you on Midlife Crescendo today. Now, Colleen, you married your high school sweetheart, and Bridget, you married your college sweetheart, and my husband is both, so we have that in common. <laughs> <laughs> I guess technically mine would be both too. I guess. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, I dated. I started dating my husband when I was a junior in high school, and then we've been together ever since. So that's uh, thirty-six years married. We dated about five years, so it's been a while. Wow. That's great. <laughs> that's great, though. I love it. I love to hear that. Yeah. Well, the first question I always ask my guests is what, tell us something that is not on your bio. Okay. Um, Do you want to go? Okay. Well, I didn't realize this, but uh, that you, you saw me at Puckett's Boathouse, which I'm so sad (laughs) that it's not open anymore. Or or, or it was called something else. It used to be Boathouse. And then it was some kind of, I don't even remember what it was called, but they had hard candy Christmas uh, at Christmas and it was Dolly Parton themed and pink. And I love Dolly Parton. Um, I just love what she does. I love her music, but I just love what she does for uh, yeah. her gifting, um, the way she donates the, her imagination library to send books to children under five. I think that's amazing. She's one of 12 children and so am I. So Dolly, we have that in common. If you if you hear this, you know, we'd love to talk to you. Um, all of us would, Midlife Crescendo yes. and Hot Flushes and Cool Topics. We'd all love to talk to you. And, you know, we can talk about, I know how she said that she was, she was like, uh, because she was number four, she had to be the mom to one of the babies. And that's how it happened in my family. But I was number 11. 
So I had Patty was my sister mom, but, um, and then I was her baby friend. So we were all <laughs> talking about or my siblings that I, there were 10 girls and two boys. We'd talk about uh, who was your sister mom and who was your baby friend. So, you know, we have that. So I'm sure she had sister moms and baby friends in her family. That's as well. fun. Yes. Well, what yes. about and you, Carly? Well, I have to say Bridget's love of Dolly Parton has come into Bridget's love of pink. So if you ever see Bridget, there's a really good chance she will have something pink on because <laughs> she loves all things pink. I would say um, I've developed in midlife a love of travel, and I think Bridget has as well. Um, I love seeing new places and not necessarily just seeing like the t- typical like tourist places, but really getting into the culture of different locations around the world. Um, I think that's one of the gifts that we get to do in midlife is maybe travel a little more and travel more in depth. And you're not chasing children and making sure no one has a cold and everybody's in bed at a certain time. You really get to enjoy just you you and whomever you might be traveling with. It happens to be my husband, but lots of women do girls trips. And so I would say my love of travel would be something that definitely is is been instilled recently. I love that. And yeah, my husband and I love to travel and um, we do the same thing. We love to go and not just see all the touristy sites, but immerse ourselves in the culture. Last spring, actually, um, a year ago, we went to Italy. We were in Florence, Italy, and we I I talked him into taking cooking classes. So we took cooking classes in Italy, pizza and gelato, and then a pasta making class. And it was so fun. We did all oh, the typical other things, but being there and learning those things from those people and being in that culture, it was fabulous. We yeah, we were talking to two Italian girls. <laughs> so yeah, exactly. it's funny. people will come on our show and they'll hear Colleen and Bridget. They think we're Irish <laughs> and we're Italian. I mean, oh. I mean, my grandfather was Italian, was from right near uh, Florence. He was from Lucca, Italy. But oh. it, Colleen was a Ricci. I was Biagi. And it's so funny. But I, I love Italy. That's yes, oh, my, I do too. Yes, definitely yeah. a highlight. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> I would go back in a heartbeat. Well, you guys were friends before you started your podcast. So tell me, how did you meet? Bridget tells this story better than I do. Oh, do I? Okay. <laughs> well, um, so I think we actually first met at the, we live in a neighborhood. We both moved to this neighborhood that has a lot of activities for people uh, to meet each other. They're really like a lifestyle community, but there's people of all ages here. But Colleen and I, just like being Gen X people that we are, are the smallest demographic (laughs) in the people here. Um, There's a lot of grandparents that wanna be around their grandchildren. And then there's a lot of young families with small children, but Colleen and I are empty nesters. So we moved here, I maybe got here about six or seven months before Colleen did. And they have a new residence meeting. And so I remember meeting this girl there that your husband wasn't here yet. You were in the process of moving. And she said, I'm a Pilates instructor. And, you know, then we met her and then they have concerts on the lawn. And just really great. You bring a chair, you set up a table, you have some drinks. And my sister moved here as well. One of my sisters moved here after I moved here. She liked it so much. She moved here. And she said, hey, I saw some people that they look our age and they were at the concert and you've got to meet them too. And she introduced us and it was Colleen and her husband and a few other couples our age. So we just kind of started doing things together because we were empty nesters and, you know, not as many people in that 40, mid to late 40s, 50s, mid 50s age. So that's how we met. So we you know, started doing that. And if you want to tell the story about how the podcast started, Colleen. Yeah, uh, sure. I was going to ask you how you made the jump into starting a podcast together. Well, you know, one, again, one of the benefits of being in midlife is you kind of have this inner, like you can tell when someone is nice, someone is full of, you know what, and (laughs) you click with the people that resonate with you that are, you know, just, this is who I am, love it or not. And Bridget and I definitely connected on kind of a real level. And we were having lunch with some of the other women that we connect with, one of them being her sister. And a friend of ours was doing a podcast and she is doing it on something completely different. 
But we started talking as we always do when we get together about, you know, brain fog and, you know, I still had my um, period at the time. So I was jealous of everyone else in the room and (laughs) we were just talking about all these things. And Bridget and I realized, wait a second, she's doing a podcast about something different, but what about the 50 plus woman? Like are there podcasts? And at the time, which was September of 2019, there was not, there really weren't. Now this is just before the pandemic. This is just before the menopause explosion. So we kind of reached, like we started, we rode with it and it was during the pandemic. So we were blessed to be able to get a lot of guests that probably normally we wouldn't have been able to get because they were home. Right. Everybody was home. So as the conversation with menopause grew, our podcast grew with it. Now, Bridge and I are we tell everybody we had absolutely no experience in doing podcasts. It wasn't like one of us, you know, knew how to use the sound system, how to do No, we thank goodness for YouTube because we truly learned as we went and it just shows women. It doesn't matter. We were 52 when we started. It doesn't matter. You can learn yeah. at any age. And so after a very slow start of learning, we caught ourselves, okay, we're getting in a rhythm here. And it just kind of took off. And we've been loving having these conversations with women of all different, you know, everywhere around the world, all different experiences. But we all seem to have a lot in common at this stage of life. Well, I love that. I love that you started at midlife because I'm always encouraging women to, you know, life doesn't end at 40 or 50 or just because your ovaries are declining, <laughs> you know, it, it, we have so much more life to live. And now they're saying the life expectancy is now like to a hundred. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I mean, you know, you have to think about what are you going to do for the rest of your 40 plus years? Right. So I love that you guys started that in midlife. Now, were there hurdles to overcome and how did you maneuver those together? So many, so So many many bridges. Yeah, (laughs) when we tried to do our trailer, we were trying to do it without goofing up and we really didn't know the intricacies of editing that well. It took us seven hours, eight hours. Oh, I oh think gosh. so, yeah. yeah. To do like a two-minute yeah, promo. Like a two yeah, minute it was ridiculous. Intro to it, and we just kept saying it over, over, and I would, fl- I flubbed more than Colleen flubbed. Uh, by, yeah. You know what we, we just were trying, were trying, to, trying say. to be. We were trying to we're be tr- completely perfect, which is just not possible. It's not to learn possible. That. And oh, and that's what I love about podcasts. And when I listen to podcasts, I love the you know, hiccups and the whatever, because I think it's funny. It makes the people real. And I mean, if I don't, you know, want some obnoxious noise or something like that happening, but life happens and it's just kind of funny and it, it's relatable. So that was, that was great. Just learning. Curves. Social media was something <laughs> it took forever to learn. And we're still trying to figure out algorithms and SEO. Forget well, it. they like- change every day. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Like all of a sudden you're like, why did this happen? And it's so wild. Uh, something will do great on one social media and it won't do well at all on another one. It'll be the same clip and you are thinking, oh, what's going on? But it's, um, you know, in learning to repurpose what we have, like I always felt like at the beginning we had to use something new and that was great. And I, I always said, you know, we went to, we were kind of lucky at the beginning when we started there happened to be a podcast convention in Atlanta so it was she podcast so it was for women so our friend that has the other podcast let us know about it and we all three just drove to Atlanta and that was very helpful too so it's um you know it's been you know we're still learning we're still learning things. Colleen's laughing at me saying, Bridget, you cannot buy another microphone. Don't <laughs> quit looking at the microphone. You must have bought like six or seven in the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> so I think this one's better. I think this one might be better. It's like I had to have an interv- a microphone intervention. So, yeah. Yes. And I did well. notice that she has pink earphones to match mm-hmm. her pink theme. Yes. <laughs> pink I pictures in the background. Pink yeah. stuff on her shelves. Yeah, I did notice. (laughs) (laughs) I love the theme. I love it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Well, tell me, how has this changed hosting this podcast? How has this changed your midlife season? Like, what has it added to your midlife? So many ways. So many ways. Um, If someone had told me that we would be speaking to some of the most 
the highest experts in menopause, some of the best celebrities in our demographic, I would have laughed and said, yeah, maybe I'll run into them in LA at a lunch place. But I certainly wouldn't be able to say, oh, I've had a 45 minute conversation with this person, or I got to speak with, you know, the um, um, menopause organization's president or something like that. It's just, it's open doors that we probably never would have thought to go through had we not started the podcast. Yeah. And I think it's so amazing too. I love that these experts are so willing of their time because they are busy. And I really appreciate the time that they offer. And, you know, we don't, we don't pay our guests and we, you know, um, and I just appreciate that they want to get the word out to other women, these experts and in the people who are celebrities that they just want to share their story and they are willing to Get this word out to other women, maybe when you don't feel alone, that is the biggest thing. When you don't feel alone and you know this is happening to other women, that just just builds up all the voices and gives you the courage to talk to physicians, to be an advocate for yourself in any area, whether it's in a medical area, whether you're trying to start your own business or you're just anything, buying a car, going to the bank, just to give you the courage to have, to be an advocate for yourself and to speak up for yourself. I love that, that the other women come in and share that with our listeners. Well, I love it. You have truly been a voice for midlife health and in bringing in all these guests. I love your podcast. I listen to it regularly. And I love that you do bring in these experts to help women in midlife health because you all of us grew up in an age where you didn't actually question your doctor. So if your yeah. doctor didn't bring it up, you didn't bring it up and you were having, you might be having these issues or if they gave you a very um, finite or clinical answer and didn't really answer your problem or put a bandaid on your problem, you didn't know what else to do. But now that we've opened up this bigger menopause conversation and all the things, all the changes that are going on in our bodies, our minds, and even heart health and all the postmenopausal disease that can happen, you truly have been pioneers in opening up that conversation. And I'm thrilled, thrilled that you're doing that. And I love your information and that you cover the gamut of all the things that we experience in midlife. So it's it's really wonderful. Thank you. So, Thank you. Well, tell me, are there any episodes that stand out or come to mind? I know they're all your babies, so it's hard to pick a baby, but like, are there any, like your favorites or funny or anything that stands out? Anything with Carla Hall is a star. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. She's a star. I love her. Anything that we have two episodes with Carla Hall. She's absolutely incredible. And, you know, Dr. Heather Hirsch, she's wonderful. Dr. Mary Claire Haver taping with her again she has a new book coming out um gosh there's like you said it's like choosing a child it is um, there's so many yeah there's just yeah so many. There's, I personally yeah. I I just I personally got to interview my daughter in the first season that probably was a highlight for me That's um, fun. because my daughter had a very severe eating disorder in her teens luckily mm. she's 28 now and healthy enough but but we got to talk to we got a conversation about perspectives. So from the mom's perspective and from the daughter's perspective, we were very honest. You know, moms really feel lost during that. There's a lot more resources now, but a decade ago, there weren't any. So I think mm -hmm. that probably, what about you, Bridget? Wow. You know, you mentioned all the, these great, you know, like Carla Hall, so funny because she can be very funny, like coming out with, you know, pause for the minnow, but then, you know, sharing stories about the frustration of being in the sandwich, you know, generation, how her mother is starting to experience dementia and how that happens and how you have to make that move and what's going on with them. And you don't realize how things like that are happening maybe to your parents. That really stands out. And then there's people, we had um, Keisha Stewart on, who is not a famous person, but she wrote a book about what happened to her. She had a SCAD, a heart attack. So which, widow maker some, heart. Attack. Yeah. Like a, a, a a um something separated in her uh I can't even her artery like she had like a a tear in there and it normally kills people most people don't survive that so sharing her she wrote a book about it and how that picked her up to really move ahead 
uh, become this registered nurse that she has become to represent the Heart Association. So I thought that was an amazing story too, because she's, she's just trying to share her story. She wants to warn other women. So people like that, it, it's amazing. Um, oh gosh, there's so many. I mean, I, I just love to hear, to hear from these you know, different- we, we learned early on, sorry. We That's learned okay. early on that if you can't say vaginal dryness, yeah vagina <laughs> you know you're yeah. not going to be able to have a podcast about women's health and wellness plus just all of the spectacular things we can do including sex sex shouldn't hurt right <laughs> yeah. oh right that just right. i don't know if you all saw rachel this rubin. it just came out yesterday oh rachel rubin was great she's fantastic but it came out yesterday i think mary claire haver dr mary claire haver shared this Halle berry yes uh, did you see that i don't know if you saw and um she was experiencing painful sex and she went to her doctor and the doctor tells her she has the worst case of herpes he's ever seen. So she's in a big argument with her partner because she's thinking he <laughs> gave her herpes and he's like, no, you know, I didn't. I, and they both get tested. Neither of them have herpes. It's tears. She had tears yeah. and that's GSM. Common. Yeah. yeah. Wow. yeah Jen, 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 urinary syndrome. Genitin urinary syndrome. Yes. And so, you know, we've had uh, Dr. Rachel Rubin is a really great urologist. Mary Claire Haver talks about this quite a bit too. And learning about this and learning that how easily it could be treated. And also learning from these experts how to be an advocate for yourself. And so many gynecologists. You think that's your first line of defense when you need something and so many won't offer. If you want to do hormones, they won't offer it. They will not let you do it or they won't prescribe it. Um, vaginal estrogen, which can be so helpful for UTIs and for genitourinary syndrome. <laughs> and in it, honestly, you know, they always check with your doctor, but it, even if you've had breast cancer, that could be something that is an option for you because it does not go through your body system systemically the way that oral estrogen or a patch might. So learning this, I, I never right. And then knew. we have all of thought, our cool topics like, oh yeah, women who wrote like you, women who write a book after forty, or you know, bungee jump or whatever. I mean, there's just travel, right? Everything. Yeah. It's like we, yes. we just every time Bridget and I kind of thought at the beginning, okay, are we going to run out of Topics, topics and it's just yeah. like every time we learn something we learn more all you have to do is open up a magazine you're like oh there's a woman over 50 doing something cool let's try to get her on the show right so right mm -hmm. it's just it's always exciting and new like you know the love boat just exciting. <laughs> <laughs> no. well, our listeners will remember that <laughs> that was one of my favorite shows yeah. <laughs> i'd yeah, sing the had... theme song but then i would have to pay for it so i'm not uh, gonna... <laughs> oh that's right we had bess armstrong on who was hilarious bess armstrong oh, yeah. she's um, so great for seasons and colleen said you know we were asking her questions she was so funny and one of colleen's questions well i just have to ask about the love boat oh, and <laughs> she was she was taking a drink of tea when colleen asked the question and she almost spit her tea out and she starts <laughs> laughing <laughs> That was hilarious. I guess so. that wasn't a popular question. <laughs> she got it. Yeah, you caught her. And she said, "She's what did she say? She said, quality was not their strong suit. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a fun show. It was, oh, it was so oh, I was, much fun. I was on the love boat this summer. Um, our boat was, we did, a, my husband and I did a princess cruise, and it was the love boat. And they would show on TV oh, really? old love boat episodes. And yes, I did watch them. <laughs> I was like, I'm watching that. That's so fun. <laughs> That's fun. <clears throat> we're, we're definitely dating ourselves, girls. That's yeah. all good. Yeah. We're dating changing ourselves the It's changing yep. the narrative about that. That's right. For, right. Instead of saying yes. it's right. a bad thing, that, it's great. Like, I'm sorry. If someone said to me, you could be 20 again, I'd be like, no, thank you. No. I did it. And if you do right. it well enough, you don't want to do it again. Right. I don't exactly. want my period back. You can enjoy the <laughs> cramps and the hormonal migraines. And, you know, it's yeah. all good. So it's changing that narrative of saying, we're not dating ourselves. We're just remembering a this great time of life. 
This is true. This is true. Mm -hmm. But I love being midlife. I'm 58 and I'm not ashamed to admit it. You know, people ask me all the time, like, you shouldn't tell people your age. I'm like, why? I have a lot of life lived. I'm 58 and I enjoy it. You know, that is something my mother was never upset to share her age. And I had two aunts that would never share their age at all. They were her sister-in-laws. They were my dad's brother's wives and they would not share their age and they were so scared that I was going to share their age I didn't know their age mom would not tell me and one of those aunts was like well well my mother was Wilma Wilma's older than me and then when that aunt passed away my mother was two days older than that aunt oh. <laughs> I was like oh my gosh <laughs> so it is yeah that is something a gift that my mom gave was like no I'm not at all embarrassed to share my age and yeah I'm 56 by the way so oh my so it's calling yeah awesome well I yeah I believe in just owning your space in life so we've lived a lot of life we've learned a lot of things and we have wisdom to pass on and we have a lot of learning left to do so right right well, you guys have a fabulous event that you held in Nashville last fall. I want to move to that conversations with prime women, which is actually how I met you. I saw your ad on social media. And um, so that's how I actually heard about hot flashes and cool topics and then met both of you at the event. And uh, and I want to tell the audience, it is a fabulous event. Although I had been thinking about starting a podcast for midlife, that's actually coming to your event gave me the push to actually go for that, to start my own podcast. And so one of the things I love, so thank you for that, by the way. We love hearing that. Well, that's I like, love makes that. it work. Yeah, that just, yeah, that's like. Because I know gold. it's a lot of work. It's goal. <laughs> it is a lot, of, but that is the goal to encourage. I love that another woman, another midlife woman felt that urge and that push and what you've done a lot in your midlife as well. Right. But just to do that, to just take that leap. I love it. We love yeah. hearing that well, story. So thank you. You're welcome. But it's an amazing event. And I saw that when I was there, that women still want to gather that in this midlife season, we want to gather. We don't want to be isolated and alone. And you have, um, I loved all the conversations that you had in your panelists. So can you tell my audience about your upcoming event in New York city and let them know I have a lot of listeners that are in the Northeast that might want to come to your event. So I want you to tell them thank about you. it. Thank you. So we're doing conversations with prime women in New York City at Penn 2, and it's Saturday, April 27th, so it's coming up, and we have four panels of amazing speakers, and it's not lecture-based at all. It's very conversational. We want women to feel seen, to feel heard, empowered, so we have boss ladies, we have women's health, we have uh, Tea Time with Prime Women, which is some celebrities, and then we have Changing the Narrative, and I think... You know, the one word Bridget and I heard from our Nashville event was this was magical. Like, I've never been to something like this, not to mention the gift bags, which they lost their minds over. Amazing. They were amazing. (laughs) And we have some amazing stuff in um, New York City as well. But it just like you said, you know, we became so numb to Zoom calls like that was what we were. But women want to connect in person. We learn more from a table of women having coffee or tea or whatever than we learn half the time going to the doctor's office because someone says, oh, I have this. Oh, I had that. What did your doctor recommend? Or what? So there's a strength and a power that comes from being connected and building a community. And Bridget and I, it was a natural progression. Bridget and I have said from the beginning, this podcast, we're kind of putting our seatbelt on, riding the wave, see where it takes us. And some places we were like, nope, I'm sorry, detour. We're not going to go that way. And other places we were like, yes. And it's just kind of a natural transition. Um, And it's been fun. A lot of work. Um, And just hopefully we're touching women, like you said, to walk out feeling empowered for the next chapter of their lives. And tickets are out. You can go to conversationswithprimewomen.com for tickets and a full list of panelists. Like we have like Laura Geller and some amazing speakers and um it's going to be a fun day yes it is and it was fabulous in nashville will you do it again here next fall or we don't know yet (laughs) (laughs) you know it's it's, one day at a time yeah well we try to take it one step at a time um her md is an office that uh well uh women's health center that's here that does a lot of events so we might tag you know go do an event with them as well. 
Um, but we take them one step at a time. <laughs> I'd be I, overwhelmed. Not, I, I will try to attend the one in New York, but I, um, my husband just retired and it just, I kind of felt like it was a little too overwhelming for me to do too many it's events. It's a lot of work. It's a lot. So, I could handle Nashville probably, but, but I think it's just, it's a lot of work to do. And Colleen loves it. I mean, she, she really, I don't know. She kind of feels charged by doing that. Right, and I am, right. So, so I am going to try to attend the New York one. Right. And actress I'm Mindy Cohn, who was Mindy Natalie. Cohn's going to do that. She's yes. now in Palm Royale. She's going to be the co-host for that one. Yeah. So we take them one step at a time and see how right. they go. It's the first one in Nashville. We actually did our first one in New York City called The Marvelous Mrs. Menopause. Oh, you did? And I didn't yeah, know about that. that. That was our yeah. first one. We did. It wasn't as long of a day. We did it with two women uh, that uh, Care started Beauty. Care Beauty Company. And one of them we met through Carla Hall. She was Carla Hall's college roommate. Lori King. So Lori King and Celeste Lee, they uh, did it with us, but it was a nighttime event and it was like only two and a half, three hours. So not as large, but it was kind of getting our feet wet. And it was a lot of fun and feeling how that went. And then we had attended an event in California that was more of the medical side of menopause, but it was all day like morning till <laughs> like we got there at six in the morning till you know yeah. i don't know we were interviewing um the guests the that came was, off the stage yes yes oh, wow. yeah so we we got a lot of great interviews in that day but colleen and i were exhausted oh, yeah <laughs> by that day into that day and um so you know we thought about that we met mindy for a um coffee out there when we were in California and she was I think in the middle of filming Paul Royale at the time she was yeah she was and, and we talked to her then and she was like I think you're really you're on to something here maybe you need to be doing these and you know willing her willing to come out to Nashville and do that and Melissa Gilbert as well who we've had on the podcast quite a bit and Melissa uh, has Modern Prairie now she and other women have started the Modern Prairie Company and we do uh, monthly talks with them. Me, me and my, and my hormones. Yes. And I mean, <laughs> Melissa had just had surgery and I thought, oh, she won't be on next month. I mean, she just had back surgery. She was on there. She was propped up against a pillow. But it, it's like a little a call in. If you go on the Modern Prairie app, they mm -hmm. will, you can. And the app is free, by the way, calls. guys. You yes, can download the Modern one. Prairie app for free. Right. Nice. So it's, it's, you know, things like that. So she's taking it there and bringing us in, which I think is wonderful. And she came here, you know, too. So it was wonderful as well, just to have them and all of our great. And panelists. Bridget is our, yeah. Bridget is our um, in, influencer. So she does a lot of <laughs> posting on, you know, it's like recommendations for women 50 plus, whether it be clothes, skincare, whichever she's our, and a lot of it is in pink. And she's, <laughs> De we were talking De about that before yeah, we went Debbie. on air. Deborah, She's our she, social uh, media influencer. Yeah, she, uh, Debbie, w and I were talking about that before. About yeah. like, I see your post, and I'm I like, said, I love watching you model I, clothes. I said, yeah. She's good yeah. at it. I'm always like behind the scenes, going, I'll just, I'll, I'll get the interviews. You do. Yeah. <laughs> She's much better on, you know. Well, you but know, when you're doing this complimenting as co-hosts, you, you each yeah. use each other's strengths, right? <laughs> exactly. And that's what right. you, that that's what's so nice about what Bridge and I have found as we get older is that everyone just kind of want to lift each other up. The competition yeah. thing, it's, it's left behind a long time ago. Every woman has a voice. Every woman has strengths that they can use and use those to lift each other up and not try to step over somebody else. Cause we're just, we don't have time for it anymore. No. Yes. And, and, and you know what, so when much, the tide yeah. rises, all the boats rise. Exactly. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's so nice. And in the women that I have met through this community has been incredible. I, like Colleen said, if you told her five years ago or even 10 years ago that this was what we would, I didn't know what a podcast was. <laughs> I, <laughs> I didn't even know what perimenopause was when I was in it and just, you know, knowing all of this information and Colleen always says, we want our daughters to take for granted that this information is out there for them, that they don't right. have to hunt as much as we had to hunt for it. Yeah. Exactly. 
I think that's amazing. Well, as we wrap up a little bit, if I would love for each of you to just take a minute. And if you had advice for midlife women today, what would you say? What is something that you'd like to speak to the midlife women on the other side of the camera or the microphone? That you don't have to feel invisible, that it's not a foregone conclusion, that you can learn every day something new, be your own self-advocate when it comes to your health and your life. If something's not working, you know it now. You don't have to make excuses and and you have a strength that comes with midlife that you didn't have before. And that's a privilege. So I would say to women, you, you don't have to change the world, but if there, you have something you've always wanted to do, do it. Don't wait. Don't make excuses, whether it's taking a pottery class or starting a podcast. What are you waiting for? You're in this next chapter of life. You have the knowledge, you have the wisdom. And if you don't know it, you can learn it because we now have so many resources to learn it. So we're able at this age to advocate for ourselves, both professionally and personally. So do it. Right. And she, yeah, being an advocate for yourself is so important. And like you said, that we always, we never questioned the doctor. When we went, we thought that was the absolute answer. And really getting that voice and knowing that we don't have to hear that, that you can change your doctor, you can fire your doctor. That it was a big, big wake up call for me that you don't have to stick with who you did. And I remember our last um, talk on Modern Prairie, Melissa Gilbert said, you know, we would do it for our children. If we didn't like what was happening for our child medically, right. we would do it. Yet for ourselves, we just kind of all, we always would put ourselves last. Midlife women tend to, especially if you're a mother or you're a caregiver or, you know, you're taking care of somebody else, you will put yourself last. Or even if you're in the working world and you don't have children, you're not married, sometimes you always put yourself last in that working world and you don't have to do that. And a big thing is self-care is not selfish. And, you know, yeah, a great little spa care too, but just even taking time to breathe a bee to yourself or read a book that you really want to read or delve into something that you want to really know more about. This is such a great time to do it. And I have never been happier personally in my life. This is probably the happiest I've ever been in my life. So yeah, find, find happiness. Yeah. I love that. And it's so true because we have a lot more years to live, a lot more things we can learn. And so we might as well enjoy it along the way. Right. Right. Absolutely. Right. <laughs> Where can my audience find you two online? Well, Hot Flashes and Cool Topics is on any podcast platform. So you can go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, whichever. We have a website called Hot Flashes and Cool Topics. And we also have a pretty large uh, IG page, Instagram page, and a great face private Facebook group. We have about 5,000 women in it. And you can post anonymously or you can post with your name, but the questions that women get and the answers, recommend, recommendations that they get, you know, we don't give medical advice, but women will say, I'm doing this. Can someone suggest something? And it's a great private community. No men are invited. So you don't have to worry about asking for anything. And that's also hot flashes on cool topics. So you right. can post pretty much anywhere. And YouTube. YouTube. Check out YouTube. our YouTube videos. Yeah. Yes, we share, we try, as long as our guests agree, we share our videos on YouTube and we also share some clips and sometimes just some other things as well. We share clips on TikTok as well as, as from our upcoming interviews or who we're having that week. We just dropped one today with Deborah Kopakin who wrote Lady Parts and her story about her, um, just the journey. financial stress. Yeah, her health care healthcare journey and the financial stress that can come with that with you know she's a writer she's written uh two books and also a journalist and also has written for television shows and how you would think someone she's had new york times bestsellers you would think that she would be financially stable but the way that goes and the way insurance goes you can really run into a lot of financial problems there so right. that's interesting well, ladies, it's been such a pleasure to have you on Midlife Crescendo today. So thank you for your time. Thank you. It was oh, fun. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Yes. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Colleen and Bridget from Hot Flashes and Cool Topics. Be sure to listen to their podcast, 
It is so informative, especially about women's health care issues in midlife. And if you live in the vicinity of New York City, I would encourage you to grab your midlife bestie and head to their event, Conversations with Prime Women, that's coming up at the end of April. It was a fabulous event here in Nashville, and I'm sure it will be just amazing there. The swag bags are quite a perk, too. I'm still using products from mine. I'll post their links in the show notes. But for tickets or more info, go to conversationswithprimewomen.com. I just love it when midlife women go for it and pursue their passions or dreams or start a podcast like Colleen and Bridget did. It doesn't matter how old you are. We never outgrow dreaming or wanting to step into the next chapter or season of our life. I'm a big cheerleader for women going after their dreams midlife because that is when mine became a reality. If you are wondering what the next chapter could hold for you and you want to explore that, I encourage you to sign up for my new course, Launch Your Reinvention, coming in April. You'll meet with me on Zoom for four Tuesdays. Women who have taken this course before have found it so helpful and encouraging to be surrounded by other midlife women also pursuing their goals. Just go to debbiecunningham.net forward slash launch course. That's L-A-U-N-C-H-C-O-U-R-S-E. Launch course, like all one word for all the info and the testimonials of others who have taken the course. Okay, next week on the podcast, we will be talking about midlife fashion and style. You definitely don't want to miss this episode if you often find yourself opening up your closet and thinking, I have nothing to wear. So follow, subscribe, and review wherever you listen so you don't miss this episode. Thanks for tuning in today. And remember, midlife is just a brand new season to find your passion and purpose for your grand finale. Talk next week.